Hey guys, it's Simmy, and this is Wrestling Unlimited, as it is Saturday, November 26, 2022, and we are here to talk about everything that went down tonight at Survivor Series War Games. I know we're starting late. I wanted to watch the WWE press conference afterwards, so I will have some notes from that as well. Not many notes, but there are some interesting notes from that that we will talk about. But Survivor Series, the both War Games matches were awesome. They both delivered tremendously. And even the other matches on the show. AJ Styles of Finn Balor was an incredible match. The triple threat for the U.S. title was a complete shocker, but a great match as well. Did not think Austin Theory would win the belt. Didn't even think Seth would drop the belt. And I also thought in its own way, Shotzi and Ronda wasn't all that bad. Way better than I expected, especially with them brawling in the front row, jumping on what may or may not have been fans. But... Overall, a really good show that we're going to talk about with you guys here. But with that, I want to say thank you if you're watching live, twitch.tv forward slash PW Unlimited. And I also want to say thank you if you're watching or listening later, whether that's youtube.com forward slash Pro Wrestling Unlimited or podcast services all around the globe like Stitcher, Spotify, Google Pod, Apple Pod, Anchor, iHeartRadio, and so much more. Remember, if you are watching live on Twitch, you can help us out a couple of different ways. You can either help us out by hitting that donate button down below or by donating Twitch bits in the live chat. Also, remember, you can help us out by subscribing to the channel one of two different ways. You can either subscribe with a tiered subscription or you can subscribe with Amazon Prime. Because remember, if you have Amazon Prime or a Prime access, access to anybody's Amazon Prime account, then you have Prime Gaming. Prime Gaming gives you a lot of cool things like free games, free stuff for games, and it always gives you one free subscription to any Twitch channel you want to subscribe to throughout the month, and I'd greatly appreciate it if you subscribed right here, Pro Wrestling Unlimited. But also remember, if you are if you are a subscriber on YouTube, you can head over there and become a channel member. As a channel member, you get early access to news, early access to podcast episodes, early access to non-news videos, and so much more. Also remember that we do give out our graphics packages. If you are a member or a subscriber on Patreon, patreon.com forward slash PW Unlimited. Last week, we did a tutorial of our AEW full gear graphics, and then we gave away our graphics package and assets, and we'll be doing the same for Survivor Series. The graphics that you saw on our channel. I will be doing a tutorial for the Photoshop and the After Effects stuff because, you know, most of this was animated graphics with After Effects more than just Photoshop. And then if you are a member or a subscriber on Patreon, you will be getting the assets and the Photoshop and After Effects files for that as well. And finally, head over to the Epic Game Store. Head over to the Epic Game Store and buy something. Whether you're buying a new game, whether you're buying an old game, whether you're claiming a free game or getting bucks for Rocket League, Fortnite, Fall Guys, or Rumbleverse, use our code right here. PW Unlimited. Again, use code PW Unlimited at checkout for all Epic Games and Epic Game Store purchases. But with that, we've got Survivor Series War Games to talk about and just a couple of notes from Triple H's press conference. I did want to note here Triple H did give us some stats on the show itself. Um, Triple H said tonight's Survivor Series was a sellout with over 15,600 fans in attendance. He said they just kept opening and opening and opening up more seats. He stated that it's the largest gate they've ever done in the city of Boston, the highest grossing Survivor Series ever, and the most watched Survivor Series of all time. Uh, Since Saturday says all the reports about the bloodline deception, they were false. But Sami Zayn is loyal to the bloodline. I don't know what you're reading there, bud. You, you're you're an odd cookie to crack because you think all of this is real and you in the chat always chat and comment like this all is real. There was never any reports on bloodline dissension. I'm just going to say that right now, unless it was some sort of kayfabe news site that reports it as real. No one ever said that the, the bloodline was going to turn on Sammy tonight. No, they didn't. Everyone always just said that this story went way longer than it was ever intended to because Sami Zayn's that awesome. Um, one other thing, Triple H was asked about a rumor that he tried to get a War Games match in WWE 20 years ago. He said, well, rumors are better than my brain and my memory, but I've always tried to get War Games in WWE. And just thinking of evolution in a War Games match, I don't care who they were against. 
evolution in a War Games match. If it was Triple H, Ric Flair, Randy Orton, and Batista against, say, maybe Kurt Angle, Chris Jericho, John Cena, and Kane. Man, that would have been good. Man, that would have been good. Evolution against anybody, to be completely honest. But nothing happened on the kickoff show. Just going to say that. And the main show started off with Michael Cole telling us that there were over 15,609 fans in attendance. Cole mentioned that Dusty Rhodes created this match war games and told us about the wrestlers in the very first one. So we're doing the entrances for the women's war games match, and they do state making her way into the ring, Meechin Mia Yim. So Meechin is a nickname, just a nickname, not her actual name that they've changed it to. So they haven't changed her name to just Meechin. I don't know why someone did that on the website and confused everybody, but she's just Mia Yim. Straight up, Mia Yim. We do get the women's war games match and Bianca Belair and Dakota Kai start the match off for their teams. Remember, it's two people start, you go for five minutes. After one person comes in, then it's three minute intervals staggering from different um, teams. They had a nice back and forth exchange early on. Belair got the advantage moments before EO Sky would enter the match. Belair gave them a double vertical suplex, but managed to work over work uh, them over until Asuka, no. She got worked over until Asuka entered into the match. Asuka beat up both women just long enough for Belair to recover and even the odds. Kai had already been driven into the side of the cage a bunch of times at this point. And let me fix my microphone. It's kind of like falling down on me for some reason. Let me tighten this up. So Nikki Cross enters, who during her entrance doesn't get in the cage at first. No, 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 no. What does Nikki do? She climbs to the top of the cage. The little cage cell pods that they had to stay in before they entered into the, the war games. And they're like, does Nikki Cross know that she needs to get inside the cage? And as they're saying that, Ray Ripley's in the cage, just doing pull-ups. Just doing pull-ups being the badass that she is. Nikki Cross comes in next and brought kendo sticks and a trash can lid in with her. She also slammed the door on Asuka's head. The heels were in control until Bliss entered and ran wild. Also, Alexa Bliss almost tripped over a camera cable. She basically had to run down. They were pulling the cable tight at one point when she was running down. She flung it over herself. Looks back like, no, 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 no. And then she finally gets into the ring. Kind of funny. Everyone hit each other with kendo sticks as Cross climbed to the top of the cage and brought everyone down with a diving cross body. Well, really only two, but yeah. Bailey would then enter and bring in ladders and chair or tables. Her team used weapons to regain the advantage. Mia Yim would enter next and brought more stuff into the ring. She teed off with Kai before spiking her onto a trash can lid. The women then paired off in different corners of the rings as Belair suplexed Bailey, Yim super, um, Belair superplexed Bailey, Yim superplexed Kai, Bliss superplexed Cross, and Asuka superplexed Sky. Rhea Ripley would enter and wipe out all the baby faces, allowing her team to take control. Uh, EO Sky drop kicked Asuka right in the head as Ripley held her in a standing clover leaf. It was funny because she's got her in the standing clover leaf, and then EO just starts running the ropes, running the ropes, running the ropes. You know what she's eventually going to do? And Michael Cole goes, what is EO Sky doing? And Corey Graves just simply just goes, cardio. I laughed at that one. So Yim tried mounting a comeback at one point, but Bailey caught her in the ropes, and Sky hit her repeatedly with the trash can lid. Lynch then entered the match, and it officially started at 27 minutes and 44 seconds. So the match is official. It started. Boom. As, as Samantha Irving told us, this is war games. Let the war commence. And this match in total did go 39 minutes and 40 seconds longer than the men's match. A full minute and 10 seconds longer than the men's match. Dulich handed out kicks and dodged an attack by Cross, who hit Sky with the trash can by mistake. With Sky covered in the trash can, Lynch gave her a diving leg drop. Lynch faced off with Bailey, which I think was meant to be a big reaction, but... The crowd, I don't know if the crowd was just not good tonight. If anyone was there, let me know. Or if it was that the crowd wasn't mic'd well. Because it sounded like the crowd was 
trying to be into the show, but may not have been miked well. Um, so moving forward, Lynch easily disposed of Bailey before she was confronted by Rhea Ripley, which did get a good reaction. Bailey then got got in the way, so Ripley gave Lynch a riptide for a two. Asuka sprayed the mist in Rhea's face, and Lynch spiked her with a DDT, but Bailey got in the way before they can go for the cover. Bailey gave Lynch a rose plant on the steel plate in the middle of the two rings, but the cover was broken up. Belair tried to bring down six women with the Tower of Doom spot, but Cross hit her with a kendo stick before she could do so. Everyone then traded big moves, which led to Eel Sky wiping out Belair and Yim with a moonsault off the top of the cage. The crowd was pretty quiet at this point, but they broke into a holy shit chant and a this is awesome chant right after EO's big move. Also, EO doing the moonsault looked good on TV, but if you can find some of these Twitter videos of fans in attendance, it looks way better and way cooler from like their far out in the stands, in the seats perspective. I'd say go look for those. Cross then handcuffed herself to Bliss. And Bliss then put Nikki on her shoulders and did an electric chair drop on a trash can that, well, Bliss took the most of. Nikki kind of fell over the trash can and Alexa fell right on the trash can. Asuka then gave Ripley a code breaker before Ripley drove her into the cage. Yim went after Ripley, but Ripley drove her into a ladder which, which snapped. Lynch then gave Kai a manhandle slam and Belair gave Sky a KOD. Belair took out Bailey with a KOD on the side of the cage as... They were setting up a table in the corner. Becky then put both EO Sky and Dakota Kai on the table and climbed to the top. Top of the cage, not top rope, top of the cage. And did a leg drop off the top, then pinned, I want to say, Dakota Kai and picked up the victory. According to Triple H in the press conference, he was like, yeah, we called Becky and asked her if she wanted to do this as a return match. And the next call I get is, Becky doesn't really want to do it, but Becky wants to climb to the top of the cage and jump off. So, yeah. He's like, she didn't even wait to get her toes wet in this match. Because you got to think, yes, Nikki Cross jumped off the top of the cage, but I think Nikki's been in one. You can correct me if I'm wrong. Eo Sky, she's been in plenty of War Games matches and done that moonsault off the top three, four times already. But Becky does win for her team. She does the moonsault off the top of the cage and pins Dakota Kai to pick up the victory for the baby faces. Then we go to commercial slash Brock Lesnar video package. Remember, 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 remember. These video package, they don't mean anything. So just because we got a Charlotte Flair video package tonight doesn't mean, oh my God, Charlotte's coming back soon. It, that's not what it means. She could be coming back soon. She should be coming back soon. But that's not what this means. It's just a video package to stall for time because if you don't pay the full price for Peacock, the $10, or five if you have Comcast with the split in half. Then you get commercials. So in the back, Jay Uso approached Roman Reigns. Jay said, you know, he's worried about trusting Sami Zayn, especially after what happened last night, and that he hasn't trusted Sami since day one. He said Zayn is the reason they lost last night and the reason they don't have the advantage tonight. He also said that he lied to me about talking to Kevin Owens. I knew he talked to Kevin Owens. I saw him talking to Kevin Owens, and he lied to me. Jay said the only reason... They didn't go after him last night because Roman didn't give the order to attack. Jay said that he wanted to know what Reigns wanted to do. Reigns told him, go out there and be the right-hand man. He said that I will take care of Sammy. He said he will look Zane in the eye and would know where he actually stands. He then told Paul Heyman, bring me Sammy Zane. And Sammy said, said and Paul Heyman gets his phone and goes, call Sammy Zane. They call Sammy into the locker room of the tribal chief. So then next up, we have AJ Styles against Finn Balor in a great match. I thought this match was so good. I really, really, really liked this match. Molly Holly is going to be on NXT this week. That's an interesting one. So as we move forward, Michael Cole actually gave us a rundown of the Bullet Club. He gave us a Bullet Club history lesson. I'm like, this man didn't just say, well, these two were both big stars in Japan. Their paths crossed, and now they're fighting each other. No. No. He's like, 
Finn started a group called Bullet Club. And Carl Anderson was there from the beginning. He was there in the early stages of the Bullet Club. But then Finn left Japan. And as Finn was leaving Japan, AJ was getting to Japan and became the de facto now leader of Bullet Club when Finn left as leader. Now, this match is not about just who is better, but who is the better leader. And I'm like, Michael Cole out here giving us a whole damn history lesson of the goddamn Bullet Club. And not just saying... Well, these two worked in Japan. They are both top guys in Japan. Now they want to prove that one's better than the other here in America. Like, no. Full on Bullet Club reference and everything. Took me aback a little bit. So, Corey Graves also said something about, you love when Twitter is nice to you, and, uh, in a reference to Michael Cole and, and all of his uh, Bullet Club knowledge. But, I really liked the match, but not a lot happened in the early portions of this match that did end up going 18 and a half minutes. The first like five, six, seven matches was just them going back and forth and doing moves and doing moves. And Styles at one point was on the apron. So Gallows and Anderson. So, so yeah, Styles is on the apron. Priest and Dominic tripped him. So Gallows and Anderson go after Dominic and Priest. Priest jumped in and they brawled through the crowd. Styles made sure to get a shot in on Dom before they scampered away. They traded moves in the middle of the ring, AJ and Finn, that is. And Styles no-sold a few of Balor's kicks and fired back, but Balor cut him off with a headlock elbow drop. Styles then set up for a Styles clash, but Styles, uh, but Finn kicked out of it before hitting a Pele kick. He slipped out of it. Styles then tried mounting some offense, but Balor cut him off yet again this time with a gut buster of his own and a fireman's carry neck breaker. Styles did a backflip into a headlock elbow and got a two off of it. Balor then missed a coup de gras and Styles applied the calf crusher, but Balor countered by slamming Styles' head right into the mat. They traded a few more counters here and there until Styles finally hit the phenomenal forearm, pinned Finn Balor, and picked up the victory. Really, really good match. I thought these two worked. Phenomenal together, no pun intended. AJ Styles, every time they're in there together. And unfortunately, hopefully, I mean, unfortunately and hopefully, this is the end of this feud. And we go on from there with both groups. So then there was a commercial break where we got a Liv Morgan video package. Then Ozzy Osbourne told the WWE Universe to buy his new album. Michael Cole said that Raquel Rodriguez will not be at ringside with Shotzi Blackheart or Shotzi tonight, and they showed her arm in a big brace. And then they said that she broke her elbow. They showed a, a, uh, what's it called, x-ray, and said she will be out of action for four to six weeks. Shotzi then pointed to the sky before her entrance, kind of, you know, dedicating the match to her father who recently passed away. Cole said that was exactly what she was doing. And then we got her and Ronda Rousey. In a very interesting match that went about 7 minutes and 15 seconds-ish. It was better than I expected. I'm just going to say that. It was better than I expected. Shotzi went for a suicide dive early, but Baszler pushed Rousey out of the way and took the brunt of the force. Shotzi then shoved Rousey into the seal steps and knocked down Baszler. Shotzi tried a high cross, but Ronda countered into a slam. Rousey toyed with Shotzi early on, uh, for a little while and mocked her while she did... While mocked her while she did as a brief We Want Sasha chant broke out in Boston. Shotzi tried a tornado DDT on the apron, but the spot really didn't work. She didn't really connect, and Ronda just kind of fell over instead of taking a DDT. Shotzi then chucked Ronda and Baszler into the crowd and jumped up on the barricade, where she dove off the barricade and fell onto who I believe are probably plants, but it's like four guys sitting in the front row. Probably people planted there by WWE, but who knows? Shotzi then went to the top rope, but Rousey beat her down, brought her down with a judo throw and followed up at the Piper's Pit. Rousey then applied the arm bar and Shotzi immediately tapped it out. Tapped it out. Ronda remains the champion. And it's like, no shit. Did anybody see Shotzi winning? No. Where does Ronda go next? Uh, maybe Charlotte comes back. Maybe Sasha, I don't think, but maybe, I don't know. Sasha out here promoting Kalisto's CBD gummies. But regardless, I thought the match, okay match. Nothing like super memorable other than the dive into the crowd. 
but better than I expected. I will say that for certain. Another commercial with the Cody Rhodes video package. Then Zane got, got to Roman's locker room. Reigns asked, did you speak with Kevin Owens last night? And Sammy's like, uh, yeah. And Reigns said, well, why'd you lie to Jay? He's like, well, I didn't want to put any pressure on Jay before the big match last night because of what Kevin said to me. Zane's like, plus, I really didn't speak to Kevin. Kevin talked to me, and then I asked him to leave. Reigns wanted to know what Owen said. And Zane was like, well, he told me to turn on the bloodline before you turn on me. Reigns knew that Owens was his friend, but they, the bloodline, they weren't just family. They were blood. Reigns needed to know where Sammy stood. Zane said, I'm completely on your side. He knew that only five people were allowed to enter Reigns' locker room, and it meant everything to him that he was one of those people, quote, stating, I'm with the bloodline. Reigns stared him dead in the eyes, then hugged him and smirked. He then said, let's do this. Reigns' face was very serious, like he may have trusted Sammy, but still wasn't 100%, maybe like 95 to 98, 99%, but not 100%. So we get the triple threat for the United States Championship. This match went about just shy of 15 minutes. Really fun match. All three guys worked perfect together, and we had a great creative finish that really reminded me of WrestleMania 31. You remember WrestleMania 31, Seth Rollins, apropos, made that match a triple threat. Seth was on the shoulders of Brock Lesnar for an F5. Well, what happened? Brock got speared by Roman Reigns. Before Roman can get up, he then got a curb stomp. Seth pinned him and became world champion. So not the same kind of finish, but very similar with Theory was up in a Falcon Arrow by Rollins. Rollins got speared. Theory falls down on Rollins and pins him 1-2-3. But as far as the match does go, Lashley dominated early. But Theory prevented him from potentially winning multiple times at once by pulling the ref out of the ring. They fought on the outside, and Theory dropped Lashley with the steel steps. Theory worked over Rollins until he came back with some chops, a clothesline, and a thrust kick. Rollins handed out a suicide dive or two, or three or four, to each guy, wiping them out. Uh, into the barricade. Rollins tried to stomp, but Lashley yanked Theory out of the way and put Rollins in the hurt lock. Theory put Lashley in a sleeper until he uh, had to let Rollins go. Lashley then dumped Theory from the ring, who tried to jump on his back. And then Rollins gave Lashley a pedigree, but he kicked out of two. Theory dumped Rollins from the ring and gave Lashley a rolling blockbuster. Lashley slipped out of an A-Town down attempt and applied a hurt lock. Theory used the Bret Hart kick off the ropes corner trick to try and pin Bobby Lashley, who still had the hurt lock applied, but Lashley eventually let go and kicked out. Rollins also assisted in, in the kick out here by doing a frog splash onto Bobby Lashley, but actually landing on his face. Rollins and Theory then traded uh, counters until Lashley managed to put both of them in the hurt lock at the same time. Kind of a janky looking move, but kind of cool at the same time. They both got out of it pretty quickly by pushing Bobby into the corner. Theory and Lashley were hunched over at one point, so Rollins stepped off Theory's back and gave Lashley a curb stomp. Theory prevented a cover, so Rollins gave him a superplex. Rollins was going to roll through and go for the Falcon Arrow, but that is when Bobby Lashley would spear Seth Rollins. Rollins would then fall. Theory would then fall on Rollins and end up pinning him 1-2-3. Lashley, I guess, couldn't get to his feet or muster over in time to break up the pin. Austin Theory, who is sponsored by Beyblades, is the new United States champion. And they got another commercial break. We got a Miz video package this time. New Day also plugged WWE shot. Jay approached Reigns and said if Sammy lied, asked if Sammy lied to him too. Reigns said that he saw everything he needed to see in Zayn's eyes. And Jay seemed content for the most part, I guess you could say. Then we got the men's war games match. I just wanted to make a note. Kevin Owens, homage to Dusty Rhodes here tonight, wore the big red elbow pad and a Dusty Rhodes t-shirt. Loved it, 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 loved it. 
with the men's war games match. It is the Bloodline against the Brutes. Butch and Jay Uso would start this match off. Jay had the upper hand early, but then Ridge Holland would come out as the baby faces. The Brutes had the advantage. Uh, Holland entered next and beat the crap out of Jay for about three minutes. Jimmy was then all ready to walk out the cage, and as he did, his arm goes back because Roman grabs him. And he's like, doesn't say a word. He's, Roman's here sitting in a stool, right? Sitting on a stool. And he's like, you. He points at Sammy, and Sammy's like, me? I got to go out? What? No, look, Jay's down. These two guys are going to beat my ass. So he trepidatiously walks down to the ring. Very concerned. You got Butch and, and Ridgey over there up on the side of the cage. Like, come on, Sammy. Come on, Sammy. And he's like, Ooh, I don't know if I can do this. I don't know if I should do this. And he finally eventually gets in the ring as the crowd's chanting, Sammy Uso. Sammy Uso. So Zane does run a little wild on Holland and Butch, wiping them out before Jay finally gets up and does a little dive to help Sammy. Holland was about to squish Jay into the cage at one point, and Sammy pulls him out of the way. Ridge goes flying into the cage, and Sammy just looks at Jay, and he's like, I saved you. I saved you. McIntyre would enter next for his team and just tossed around Sammy Zayn like a rag doll. Legit. He's throwing Sammy like he weighs 20 pounds. If even that. He's just throwing Sammy. Throwing Sammy three or four times. McIntyre then set up Jay for a superplex, but Sammy once again made the save. Hall and then wiped out Zayn, and McIntyre finally suplexed Jay before giving Zayn a DDT. Then, finally, Jimmy would come in. Jimmy Uso would make his way in and brought in like two, three, four tables. Jay and Sammy argued over who would actually set up the tables and got into a little bit of a shoving match as Jay was like, calm the heck down. Break it up. Let's focus. Reigns was in the ring or in the cage watching on, shaking his head, not happy. Tribal Chief, not happy. They eventually did work together to fend off the other team. McIntyre then fought them off as Owens was next to enter. Owens brought in some steel chairs and used one on both Usos. He hit uh, Jay Uso with one. He then threw another at Jimmy Uso, just threw it at him, and then hit a swanton on Jay. Zane and Owens then faced off, but Holland and uh, Holland attacked Zane before anything could actually happen. A lot of teases here before we got to the finish. Great, I will say the whole Sammy Kevin stuff masterful storytelling in this match. Masterful. Like, that's not even enough to say how great this was. So Owens put Jimmy through a table as his teammates beat up Sami Zayn. So Sokoa would enter next and ran wild on the Brutes. Owens drove him into the cage at one point and super kicked him twice, but Sokoa no-sold it. Owens then tried a power bomb, but Sokoa backdropped him onto the seal in the middle of the ring. Or the middle of the two rings. Reigns Seemed impressed with Solo Sokoa, as Sokoa also dropped a McIntyre with a uh, super kick, but then McIntyre came right back with a running headbutt. Sheamus would be the finals, would be the final man to enter his team, and he tossed around members of the bloodline as he got in the ring. Sheamus rallied his buddies, and they put the boots to everybody. Reigns was looking on and finally stood up and was like, all right, all right, I need to do something here. Like, he looked not worried or concerned, but kind of a little upset. That his team's getting wrecked. Finally, it was time for Roman to come out. And the match is official at the 28-minute mark. Each team stood tall on their side of the ring. Well, on their own ring, looking at the other. And we got some, oh my god, I'm going to pull this up really fast. I don't have this exact screenshot. But there were some screenshots. There were some like shots from these matches that were just... And here's one I got from, I want to say the Women's War Games match. Yeah, this is from the Women's War Games match. Like, man, I closed it. Like, these shots were just so cool. These Wile E. Coyote overhead cam shots. Like, these shots were so awesome to see. Like, we got these overhead shots showing both rings, the whole cage and everything. So cool. So cool. There was one of the Bloodline on in this ring and the brutes over here standing and it was awesome. It was awesome. I didn't get a screenshot of that one though. The match is official. Both teams are at their feet and the brutes are like, we ain't waiting no more. And the brutes jump to the other ring and start attacking. 
Um, they're all going, and Sheamus is trying to get Roman in the middle of the cages on the ropes for the 10 beats of the Baldrin. He finally does, as every other member of the Brutes grab a member of the Bloodline, and they start doing the beats, the beats, the beats, the beats. They get to 20. Some of the guys let go. Sheamus keeps going. 25. He stops. Before Roman can fall over, <laughs> Drew McIntyre walks over really fast and just, Boom! Hits Roman, and then Roman finally collapses. I was <laughs> just like, ah! Drew had to get one last one in on the Tribal Chief. I see, I see, I see. So Jay went for a super kick at one point on Butch, but he ducked, and Jay nailed Sammy right in the face. Jay seemed a little unbothered as the crowd chair, or the crowd booed and chanted asshole. The Usos then gave Butch a 1D, but Holland broke up the pin. The Usos super kicked Holland, and Reigns speared him through the table. Sokoa saved Reigns again and gave McIntyre a spinning solo through a table. Owen gave Sokoa a stunner, and Roman broke up the pin. Owens then slapped Reigns as they traded fists. Reigns gave Owens a Superman punch, but Owens came back with a super kick and a pop-up powerbomb to Reigns. Owens hit a stunner and seemed to have the match all but one when Zayn would stop the referee from counting. The ref got one. The ref got two. As the ref hand was up and going down for three, Sammy grabbed the arm. Stopped him. Owens would stare at Sammy. Sammy would stare at Owens. They would stare at each other for a moment before Owens would yell at him as the crowd was chanting, Sammy Uso, Sammy Uso. Owens then blocked a Jimmy super kick and Zayn gave him a low blow. Zane then looked at Reigns, who was down, and knew what he had to do. Knew what needed to be done. Reigns, or Owens, backed himself into the corner, and that's when Sammy would run at him from the other corner and kick him completely square in the face. Like, right in the middle of the face with a haluva kick. But he didn't go for the pin. At this same very moment, Jay was mustering himself up. Sammy then looks at Jay. Jay looks at a down Kevin Owens. Jay climbs to the top rope, hits the Uso splash, and pins him one, two, three. So not only is Sami Zayn loyal as far as the low blow to Kevin Owens and the Haluva kick, but also lets Jay take the pin. After the match, Sami is looking down at Kevin Owens, very remorseful, crying almost, when Roman Reigns would look at him. Give him that nod of acceptance and ask for the hug. Sammy hugs Roman. As he lets go of Roman, Jay then storms in, grabs Sammy, hugs Sammy as well. Yes, Jay Uso hugged Sammy Zane. Ooh, what? Jay now trusts Sammy. This is just another dynamic. I never thought we would see it. I thought eventually Jay would prove that Sammy can't be trusted, and that's when they turn. I didn't think Jay would ever trust Sammy. But whether he was sincere or not, he hugged Sammy Zayn, basically in acceptance. So, there we go. I thought the end of this match was just terrific. A lot of people said that coming out of this, we should be getting Sheamus and Roman Reigns, but I think it's really going to lead to Roman Reigns and Kevin Owens with all the story that they're telling and no premium live event between now and January 28th, Royal Rumble. They showed a Royal Rumble video package like three or four times, maybe it's three times. And so they're telling us, you know, no big show until Royal Rumble. So it's not like you can do like Kevin Owens at the January, December pay-per-view, whatever, early January, late December pay-per-view, and then do someone else at Royal Rumble. No, 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 no. There's no other pay-per-view until... January. So now the big question is how often is Roman even going to be on TV for the next two months? Two months till Royal Rumble. How often is Roman even going to be on TV if he's got essentially, you would presume, no big match? Power Bubba, that doesn't count. That's NXT. We're talking main roster, buddy. We're talking main roster. But with that, that was NXT. No, yeah, you got me all confused, Hot Rob Bubba. WWE Survivor Series War Games. Some more notes from the press conference here. Um, the only two people to represent the bloodline at the press conference were Sami Zayn and Paul Heyman. Uh, someone's phone went off during the press conference, and Sami's talking, talking, talking. He goes, 
Why is your phone going off or something like that? <laughs> He's like, I, I'm not even going to let it get to me. At one point, Justin Barrasso of Sports Illustrated asked Paul Heyman what he sees in Sami Zayn, what Sami Zayn means to the bloodline. He's like, Sami Zayn is everything we were not ready for, and we thought we were ready for anything. And he's been an integral part of this group and this, this team. So, yeah, also Becky Lynch and Bianca Belair were there to represent their team after war games and stuff. And then Triple H came out and talked for a while as well. So that was it, guys. That was Survivor Series. Survivor Series War Games. Also Triple H with a big-ass tease early on in the day, like an hour before the show starts. Triple H sent out a tweet that just said, tonight just wouldn't be the same. And it was a compilation video of a bunch of times of William Regal saying, War Games! And I'm like, oh my God, are we going to get Regal on this show to say War Games? And we didn't. What a freaking tease. What a freaking tease. Don't play with my emotions like that. Don't tug on my heartstrings. Don't, don't, don't. One of the greatest things about War Games in NXT was William Regal. War Games! And we never got it. We didn't get it. I think we got like Bianca yelling, War Games! Or something like that or something. Yeah. Yeah. Triple H out here, tugging at my heart. But with that, guys, that's everything I got about Survivor Series War Games. Now I want to know what you guys thought of tonight's show. Remember, you can let me know by texting in to 510-906-1341. Again, that is 510-906-1341. Also, that main event match went 38 minutes and 30 seconds, a minute and 10 seconds shorter than the women's match. So as we pull up the text messages here, we also got to get to the polls. As far as the Twitch poll does go, 100% liked the show. Everybody liked tonight's show. As far as the Twitter poll does go, bum, 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 bum. 81% liked the show. 16% thought it was just all right. And 2% did not like war games. Interesting. And if we go and look over at the YouTube poll, 85% liked the show, 12% thought it was just all right, and 4% did not like it. Versus says, I would like to see a six-man Hell in a Cell match again. Or the first ever six-woman Hell in a Cell match. Also, speaking of Hell in a Cell, Triple H was asked in the media scrum, there's rumors that you want to take away the Hell in a Cell pay-per-view and maybe other gimmick pay-per-views at that. And Triple H was like, well... With Hell in a Cell, he didn't outright say the Hell in a Cell pay-per-view is going away, but he said Hell in a Cell, he's like, I hear all these rumors that Hell in a Cell and Money in the Bank and Elimination Chamber should all go away. With Hell in a Cell, that should be a match that is reserved for a big payoff of a feud. Like, there's no other way to end this feud, so you challenge in Hell in a Cell. Not just get put in a Hell in a Cell match. He's like, but it's a little different when you go... Oh, I don't like you. We've been feuding for a while. So how about you, me, and five other people fight in Hell in a Cell or Elimination Chamber? Or, hey, we've been feuding for a while. How about you, me, and five other people fighting in Money in the Bank? He's like, so you can't just get rid of all those kinds of things. But Hell in a Cell is one that should be reserved for special occasions. So maybe the rumors are true. We're not going to get a straight up Hell in a Cell pay-per-view. He was also asked if War Games could be a traveling show as far as not just be completely tied to Survivor Series, or if it could just be completely tied to Survivor Series. And he said a couple of things. He said, A, we're going to look at everything and see if this is the route we want to go again next year, if we want to do war games at another time. It all just depends on what we're doing at the moment. He was then asked, is this a traditional elimination matches for Survivor Series gone? And he's like, no. I wouldn't say they're gone forever. Maybe we do away with them for now because people just don't want to see those anymore. But then eventually... In a couple of years or over time, you bring them back and people go, yes. And this is his own words. He goes, you bring them back over time where people think and go, yes, they're bringing that back that I always liked. So he's like, for right now, maybe doing the Raw, he's like, especially the Raw versus SmackDown stuff. It's, it's just not what we need to be doing right now, but it may be in the future, bring it back. 
And a couple of other, other comments here. This one says, great win for Papa H. Very happy. Triple H also said, talked about what Boston and wrestling in Boston meant to him. Um, this person says, loved it. The main event stole the show tonight. You know, I can't decide over the men's match or the women's match. Of course, they were the two best matches of the night. But I think just by story-wise, the men's match is going to take it for me. Just with the Sami Zayn, Bloodline, Kevin Owens stuff. Oh, also, also, good thing that MCL sprain from Kevin Owens wasn't worse. Because then this match would have been a completely different match. Like, if Kevin Owens was hurt to the point where he wasn't able to work this match like he almost was, it would have been a completely different match with a completely different story. They wouldn't have had the, they wouldn't have had the Kevin Owens tell Sammy not to trust them, to turn on them, this and that, and he turns on Kevin. Thank you, God, that Kevin Owens' injury was not as bad as early expected or early assumed. Or is this 7 out of 10 or 7.8 out of... How do you get a 7.8? This pay-per-view was a 7.8. Where, where's the point eight? Just give it, just, just give it an 8. Give it an 8. Um, this person says, If the bloodline would have lost, I would have liked... Uh, yeah, I, there's no sentence structure here. I can't read this. My dyslexia is going all kinds of places. Uh, this person says, End was great, but the rest was meh. I wouldn't go that far. As far as the text messages do go, this person says, do you think Roman has two matches at Mania, one for the WWE title and one for the Universal Championship? I would hope so, but I wouldn't get my hopes up because ever since Roman won the title, we've been told he's only got one belt, basically. Yes, he carries two titles. He's the undisputed WWE Universal Heavyweight Champion, but has he ever defended them separately? Or has it always just been triple threat for both belts? With uh, Brian Danielson or Daniel Bryan and Edge. Oh, he's just defending both belts against Drew McIntyre. Defending both belts here, both belts there. It's unlike Becky, who Becky won both belts at WrestleMania and immediately was defending belts separately. Money in the Bank comes around. She defends against Charlotte, the SmackDown title. Charlotte beats her for the SmackDown title. Charlotte then gets cashed in on by Bailey and this and that whole other story, but that's the difference there. When Becky won both belts at WrestleMania 35, it was always known that those are two separate belts, and Becky will defend them as so. When Roman won the both belts at WrestleMania last year? No, this year. Yeah, this year. When he defended the triple, the triple threat was only for the Universal title two years ago, last year. This year, when he won the belt from Roman from Brock, and he basically... Merge. He's basically Chris Jericho, 2001, undisputed champion, both belts that count as one. That's what Roman is, unfortunately. That's what Roman is. So we need freaking Eric Bischoff to show up on Raw with the big gold belt again. That's all we need. That's, that's just it. So I, I don't expect Roman to be defending both belts separately because we've been basically told, hey, it's one belt. A la Jericho, 2001, Vengeance. And then going into WrestleMania, defending against Triple H, losing the titles, WrestleMania 18, this, that, and so forth. Chris says, what are your thoughts on Austin Theory becoming the new United States champion? Now, I said in my predictions that I kind of would have liked for Theory to win and have this new, aggressive, serious Theory as the champion, but didn't expect it. And so I put my money on Seth Rollins, and I was shocked, completely shocked when Theory won the belt. This person also says, when it comes to Bullet Club, is there any... Is there anyone you want to see Triple H try to bring into WWE? Oh, so like a Bullet Club member that I would like to see come to WWE? I mean, he tried to get Kenny. He tried to get Hangman. He tried to get the Bucks. But is there anybody in, I mean, I wouldn't mind seeing Gorillas of Destiny come to WWE. I'm talking Tangaloa. But I mean, Tangaloa already did the WWE thing. Didn't have a good time as a, as a what it was it, Unico? I think is what he was. Who was he in WWE? Ingaloa. I think he was Unico. Um, Camacho. So the second Sin Cara was Unico. He was Camacho. That's what it was. He was Camacho. So the second Sin Cara was Unico. That's what it was. 
But as far as, I guess those would be my only suggestions. Bullet Club to me has kind of just jumped the shark. And it's like, there's way too many people. Now it's it's NWO. There's Bullet Club. It's just like NWO. And then we got NWO Japan. Now there's Bullet Club and Bullet Club US. It's kind of what it is. Like you got the Impact Bullet Club with like Chris Bay and Ace Austin and them and this. And this. It's like, what the fuck? What the fuck? You don't need all that. We don't need 66 guys. It's because you get beat up by Bullet Club. And Bullet Club ain't even a menacing force anymore. Like Bullet Club is not a, oh man, here comes Bullet Club. They're going to beat your ass. No, it's just like, oh, more members of Bullet Club. Cool. Ain't no different than, oh, those guys are in Bullet Club. Just like Okada and, and the best friends are in chaos. Bullet Club is not a hard and fast group anymore. It's kind of just like a allegiance. Just as like in, in New Japan. Okada and others are in chaos. Well, these guys are in Bullet Club. Does it mean anything? Not really anymore. I don't think Bullet Club really means as much as it used to. And I'm not just saying that because Kenny, the Bucks, and stuff left. I mean, a little bit, but I don't know. Then they tried adding, like, Evil and, and all this other stuff. And they do have Switchblade who's trying to lead them, but it's like... They kicked out Tangaloa and then Tamatonga. Tamatonga was one of the early members with, with Finn and Ballet or Fale and, and Anderson. And it's just like, hmm, ah, Bullet Club don't mean as much anymore. It just doesn't. But with that, guys, I do want to say thank you for joining me here. If you're watching live, twitch.tv forward slash PW Unlimited. Or if you're watching or listening later, whether that's youtube.com forward slash Pro Wrestling Unlimited or podcast services all around the globe like Stitcher, Spotify, Google Pod, Apple Pod, Anchor, iHeartRadio, and so much more. So with that, guys, have a great rest of your Saturday. Have a great rest of your weekend. I'll be back Monday morning for the wrestling wrap-up. Have a good one, guys.